No throwback hits as hard as the first ever, the OG, the beginning. And when you're new and also trailblazing, you better get it right. This is the story of how these threads came to be. On June 21st, 1997, the matchup between Rebecca Lobo's Liberty and Lisa Leslie's Sparks was not actually the beginning of women's professional basketball in the U.S. But as other attempts at pro leagues flopped, the WNBA's first season felt different from the start. I remember there was so much buildup to that first game. I remember driving on whatever the highway is in LA between the airport and downtown and seeing a giant billboard with my face and Lisa's face on it, like looking at each other, mean mugging each other <laughs> with the, you know, the tagline we got next. So what was the difference this time around? Well, the new league had the full backing of David Stern's National Basketball Association, which means NBA money, NBA arenas and exposure to NBA markets and fans. So when it came time to design the WNBA's first jerseys, the creative director, Tom O'Grady, didn't want to stray too far from a good thing. We did enough things different to make sure that they had their own identities, but they were still coming in to the established NBA, which was really the rocket fuel to get the thing going. You know, you're, you're, you're going side by side with the, you know, the best basketball league in the world. So don't get too clever, don't get too tricky. O'Grady and the creative team leveraged that partnership with team names and colors that complemented NBA teams in the same city. But they also were conscious to not make the women's league seem too much like little sisters. We wanted them to look ultra professional. It's only first once, right? So you gotta make sure when you come out of the gate that it really looks terrific. The result? eight team identities that were both individually unique and also meshed together into a bright, colorful quilt. The jerseys were bold, they were vibrant, there were splashy logos and custom fonts. It made the league look legit. Everything about it to me was beautiful and signified like the beginning of this new league, like dreams come true for so many of us. And I think jerseys are a big part of that, especially in women's basketball when you'd had um, a number of leagues start and fail. To have a league start and you're looking around, you're like, oh, we look like professionals. There was just something about it that made it all feel a little bit more real and made it feel like it was on a different level than maybe um, than maybe some of the other stuff that we had seen in the past. Lobo, Lisa Leslie, and Cheryl Swoops were fit models in the early stages of the design process. They gave feedback on how the jersey should fit over different body types. I do remember just the three of us actually being excited about being the first to kind of see the uniforms and giving our thoughts and input. I remember doing photo shoots before they had uniforms where all we had to wear was WNBA logo stuff. Um, like one of the early pictures you'll see of me, Lisa and Cheryl were in like mesh reversible jerseys that say WNBA because there weren't, there weren't uh, logos even for teams in the early days. Now it was of course the nineties, so the baggy fit and long shorts made perfect sense at the time. It's definitely a little dated by today's standards. The shoulders, the top is just, it's too broad. Like they gotta get the little cut going. And then shorts a little long for me, they might need to roll them up two, three times. I say just the cuts for real, like especially the shoulders, they a little long. As for the designs themselves, one of the biggest hurdles was being able to create eight unique design silhouettes for a startup league. So the W made it easy by using three templates. The Sparks, Liberty, and Rockers have a pronounced shoulder design that runs down through the side panels into the shorts. But unless you're looking for it, you've probably never noticed that the jerseys were made from the same template. There were a few more consistent components across the entire league, which included custom word marks and numbers on the chest, a secondary logo on the right pant, and a WNBA logo on the left pant. But the unique logos and bold colors made each jersey unique from there. And that's where the fun began. What I loved about this whole identity was the numbers and the word marks were beautiful, I thought. Everyone was so distinct and so different from the rockers with the guitar and the R to the Liberty with the torch and the I. Like we did all these little subtleties within the word marks to even bring more brand. They had their own personalities. 
And I think that elevated uh, the brand when it first launched. I do remember loving the Liberty jersey. Um, I remember loving the Liberty colors because we thought everything was going to be married to the NBA team. And so um, it was kind of exciting that we weren't just blue and orange like the Knicks, uh, that we were this sea foam. It was just different and cool and pretty. I love the um, the torch as the eye in, in the word Liberty. I love the font that they used. I have big love for the comments, but I think the palm tree on the Sparks jersey was always a vibe to me. It was just so like LA, celebrate where we're from, but like in a cool kind of way. Another element that you cannot miss in these early designs is the shine. It's a vibe. And it's also a sign of the times. You see it in the Iverson era Sixers jerseys, the Nuggets with Carmelo Anthony. The Dazzle Knit fabric was having a moment. I, I think if I had to go back, I would be like, no, we definitely don't want the shiny uniforms. But I think then it was maybe the end thing, but also it was a way, I think, for it to really like to pop and for us to make some noise, right? Like we're here and the uniforms were a big part of that. I'll take function over the shine. But if we can do the shine and function, bring it on. Shimmer, baby, shimmer. It was shiny. <laughs> I bet, you know, 27 years later, I would just say they were shiny, you know. But these jerseys are more than just templates and shines. After more than a quarter century as the best women's hoops league in the entire world, these are also memories brought to life. They're Lisa Leslie throwing down the first dunk ever. She got it for the first time in WNBA history. They're T Spoon from beyond half court in the finals. Teresa Weatherspoon at the buzzer of three. Oh! Finish. They're Houston going back to back to back to back. The thought of making history, being a part of history forever, you know, definitely crossed your mind. I still feel a huge sense of responsibility, even though it's been some years since I've played. Um, you know, the year the W started was the same year I gave birth to my son. So I honestly kind of look at the league as my child also, because they both happen at the same time, but um, also very proud. Several inaugural WNBA teams have folded, including those four-time champion Comets. And a good number of expansion teams have been added. This original jersey design lasted just six seasons. Different aesthetics, different silhouettes, and yes, even sponsor logos have come. But as O'Grady mentioned earlier, you're only first once, and these threads will forever be a part of the WNBA palette.